Hello everyone and welcome to the next session of tutorial series on introduction to Flutter. In this particular session, we will talk about Dart language and scaffold. First, we will see some variables or some data types in Dart language and then we will see some widgets in scaffold. So, let us begin with our lecture on Dart language and scaffold. But before we actually start with Dart language, let us discuss the questions that were given in the last session. The first question was to add all the files, we use git add dot command. Okay, if we want to add all the files to our staging area, then we use this particular command. Next, to commit all our files, we use git commit and then we give commit name in double quotation marks. So, we use this command to commit all our files to git repository. Next, the capital letter U denotes that the file hasn't been added yet. U means untracked. So, the file hasn't been added and A means added. Okay, the file has been added to staging area. So, these were the questions that were asked in the previous session and now let us move to various data types in Dart. So, first of all, we will see integer data type. For integer data type, as usual, we use int keyword. So, we can write int int, okay, x and 3, okay. And now, we can, we can just type in over here and the number is, number is. Now, how to give integer data type, okay. So, for that, we can use a dollar sign and x. This is known as string interpolation, okay. We can also interpolate to a string in Kotlin in the same manner, okay. So, let us now uh, debug it, right. So, we will click on start debugging. Will take some time. And here is the output. This is my first application and the number is 3. Now let us move to other data types. Okay. So we, we have double over here. Let me stop debugging. Terminate the debug session. And we have double over here. Okay. So we can have double. Okay. Double. Then we can have y equal to 4.55, right? And the number is, we can write dollar $x, okay? And if we want to give multiple variables, at that time we need to give curly brackets, okay? Suppose we want to give x and y. So for that, we need to give curly brackets over here, okay? But let us now write x is integer data type. Okay. Then we can have y is double data type. Double data type. Okay, then we have another data type. Okay, another keyword num n u m num that takes let us say we have z over here. It takes integer data type as well as it takes integer data type as well as double data type. So if I write 4.4, then also it is correct. If I write 4.76 then also it is correct. So, it takes integer and double both data types. Okay. So, we have num. Then we have bool, date, bool keyword for boolean data type. Okay. So, we will have boolean b equal to true. Okay. So, here we will give dollar B is a boolean and then we have a string data type. So, we can write at ignite ngo in string data type equal to 
add ignite ngo okay let us let us write over here heading right ngo welcomes you okay dollar s welcomes you and have a new line character okay so this is a string data type and the next data type that we have is a variable okay a variable can take this keyword this keyword can take any data type okay uh, let us say it can take a single character right if it takes a single character then also it does not have any problem if it takes an integer then also if we will not, not get an error if it takes if it takes a, a double value then also will not get an error okay so where keyword takes all the data type it accepts all the data type and then we have const const okay it takes constant value suppose pi pi is a constant value and its value cannot be changed so this is uh, this is constant data type okay here we can write pi is a constant dollar pi is a constant so it takes constant values okay and then we have a final word final keyword okay it is similar to constant it is very very similar to constant but when we have list then we can add elements into list if final keyword is used it if it is of final data type but if it is of constant data type then we cannot add elements to that same list so this is the difference between final and constant now let us start debugging it okay it may take some time okay so here it is you can see that the that we have got all our things printed and ignite and geo welcomes you three is integer data type this is double data type true is a boolean and 3.14 is a constant so this way we can this way we can have several data types in dart and now we move to next topic that is scaffold and its widgets this is a vast topic and will be explained in the upcoming sessions but for now let us have an overview of scaffold and all its widgets let us move to our visual studio code okay stop the debug session terminate the debug session okay and now i will will just think about, about it that this is the code for our home page right this can be the code for our home page then we can have co code for our logout page we can have code for our activities page so this way our main file will keep on filling okay we will keep on adding code over here and it will get very lengthy so what we will do is we will create a new file we will create a new file of home so let me create a new file type home dot dot okay and let us import material dot dot oops let me just type in over here copy and paste
and now let us create a function void void main okay and let us not create a function create a class directly class or stateless object stateless widget stless okay and the class will be home page home page okay this is a constructor and right now we don't need a constructor so we can remove this part over here okay so this all these things all these things can be put over here okay so let me cut all these things from here and I will copy all the things I will cut all the things from here and paste it over here okay let me just remove all these text from here okay Let us have only this part. This welcomes you. So this will be the text. Okay. This is for container. This is for center. And this is for material. Okay. And we have some errors over here i think okay so let us declare string s over here and let us declare it to final okay final string s equal to edignite ngo edignite ngo okay so we can save it and over here Remove this part. Let us have home page. Okay. So we will run this home page app over here. So let us start debugging it. Okay. So we have an error over here. So let us move to our Visual Studio code. Okay and terminate the debug session go to our home page okay and let us return let us return home over here okay let us write material app over here okay material app return material app and then in home we can give a container okay home and we can give a container over here and let us cut this and paste it over here okay this is child this is let me indent it giving a proper indentation 
okay we are done let me give material over here let us save it and debug the code oops we have warnings over here okay so i what we have done is we have run the debug console of this okay this home dot dot but we have to debug app from here okay we have to we need to start debugging from here so it's launching okay so here it is you can see that we have got the same thing over here okay ignite ngo welcomes you and now what we will do is we will use the scaffold so let us move back to our uh, visual studio code terminate this session okay terminate this session and then we will move to home dot dot okay so instead of instead of material we will use scaffold we have many things in scaffold first is the header then we have the body and then we have many widgets in footer scaffold we don't have child over here we can have app bar okay we can have app bar over here and generally the property of web bar oops sorry will this will be the body i think body and we can have app bar app bar app bar is the header okay main header of this uh, this is the widget okay this after the colons the things written after the colon are names of widgets and they are properties okay so generally the name of widget is similar to the name of property and now we can we can just write over here text okay so let us give a title to our home page text this is home page okay and then we can write here edit right and geo welcomes you okay in the body and we can have we can we can also have a footer right we can have a footer we can have a drawer what is a drawer drawer is we can say that uh, the three lines we you generally see in applications the three lines they are known as drawer widget okay the side menu that will pop up in an application so let us have a drawer over here drawer and we can give text this this is child of drawer okay in footer we can also have bottom navigation bar okay bottom navigation bar or bottom sheet or anything else so this is bottom navigation bar and in bottom navigation bar let us have widget bottom app bar bottom app bar okay in this bottom app bar we will have a child this 
is or let us like bottom line over here bottom line or just footer footer okay so this is bottom navigation bar let us save it and check for any errors we don't have any errors and debug this code start debugging the code okay so now we will move to our window and here it is okay so this this is our top we can say this is our app bar okay or we can say this is our header this is the drawer okay this is child of drawer okay here you can see the text and this is our footer you can see that we have footer uh, in the bottom most corner bot bottom most left corner so this was about some widgets of scaffold and now as we are at the end of our, our session let us have some questions first question dash keyword is used for declaring an immutable constant variable next question dash keyword takes integer as well as double type of values next question dash widget is used to show menu bar in scaffold and the last question dash property is used for header in application or page so these are the questions and please answer all these questions in the comment section below the solution of all these questions will be given in the next session so as we are at the end of our session let us summarize what we have studied first we studied about various data types in dart and then we studied about scaffold and its widget so that's it for today's session and see you in the next session. Thank you all.